Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing this Pixel MC550 microphone, which only costs around $28. And we're gonna actually be putting it up against this Sennheiser MKE400, which costs about $200. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Nigel and I make filmmaking content here on YouTube. I'm also a freelance filmmaker from here in Portland, Oregon. So if you enjoy this type of content, it'd be great if you subscribed and even hit the little notification bell if you wanna be notified when I upload new videos. Anyways, let's get straight into the review. This is the Pixel MC550 microphone. Now I do have to say that Pixel did send me this mic in for review, but as always with all my reviews, I'm not required to say anything nice about it and it's gonna be a unbiased and fair review. So yeah, this is a $28 mic. I think it's $27.99 on Amazon, which is a really good deal. As you can see, it kind of looks similar to the Sennheiser, like similar design anyway. Uh, the Sennheiser obviously has the fur windscreen on it, but pretty similar. They both have the shock mounts on the bottom base of the microphone. Um, one thing that is kind of cool about this Pixel mic is that it does have a plus 10 dB gain boost, and you can also do a low cut filter. So that's pretty cool. It does run off of a AAA battery, which is exactly the same as the Sennheiser. So that's pretty cool. And it has a quarter 20 mount right here on the bottom. So you can attach it to a mic stand or something like that. A few other comments on like the body and like build quality of this mic. It is all made of plastic and it only comes with a foam windscreen. The Sennheiser is made out of like a magnesium alloy. It feels really, really well built. Um, this is all made of plastic and obviously it is a inexpensive microphone, but still it doesn't feel like super cheap. This cord is coiled and it's really long. So if you're doing it on like a mic stand, like I have a little magic arm right here, I probably won't even need like a microphone extension cable. I can just plug this straight in to my camera. And another kind of unique thing about this is that the cable actually comes off the side of the microphone, whereas like with my Sennheiser, it comes off the back. But that actually kind of works out because when you put this on top of your camera, typically the mic jack is on the left-hand side of your camera. So it just kind of feeds right into the microphone jack. But with such a long cable, you kind of have to like do like one of these to get it to not be in your way. So that's just like one quirky thing about this mic is that it has a kind of like logical design feature having the mic jack on the side, but the cable is so long that it just kind of makes it awkward once you actually plug it in. So that's just one weird thing. Another weird thing is that I found that actually like putting this into the hot shoe of your camera, it is really tight. Like you really have to push it in order for it to like fit properly. So that's just another thing. Um, the shock mount is okay, but it's really stiff. So those are just some design features that maybe the shock mount will get better with more use, but I kind of doubt it. So this is a microphone that's designed to be mounted on your camera. So the best scenario that I could think to test this microphone in is like a vlog type scenario. So when I was out on a hike, I took out my camera and I tested this mic against the Sennheiser and I'll show you that footage right now. All right, so right now what you're hearing is the Pixel mic and I have the plus 10 dBs turned on and I have my camera's internal preamp set all the way to the bottom. So this is what this mic sounds like and I'm gonna switch over to the Sennheiser. All right, so now you're listening to me on the Sennheiser MKE 400 and I have the gain boost of this mic turned on as well. So we'll see how this one sounds in comparison to the Pixel mic. All right, so this is the Pixel mic and we're in a pretty windy spot here in the Columbia River Gorge. So all this mic came with was a foam windscreen, so no fur windscreen or something that could block the wind better. So you're probably hearing a lot of wind noise with this mic. And I do have the low cut filter on, so maybe it's cutting out just a little bit of that low end rumble, but maybe not seem like such a big deal to a lot of people, but most of the mics that I've received in the past have come with fur windscreens. So you might have to invest in a third party windscreen if you want to use this mic outdoors. So in comparison, this is the Sennheiser MKE 400. Now to be fair, this mic does not come with a fur windscreen and it is $200, that's without a fur windscreen. The windscreen that I have here actually costs an extra like $30. It'll be an extra $30 on top of that $200 that you pay for the Sennheiser. So that is something that you might have to invest in either way, regardless of which mic you have. But 
a fur windscreen is definitely really crucial if you're gonna be filming outside in these really windy conditions. So as you can tell in that comparison, the Pixel mic, even with the plus 10 dB boost on, it wasn't quite as hot of a signal as the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser's gain boost is louder than the Pixel. So this one is a louder microphone than this is. In my opinion, the Sennheiser did have a little bit better sound than the Pixel mic did, but still for $28, how similar this sounds in comparison to this $200 mic is actually really surprising. Like I mentioned, the Sennheiser does not come with this fur windscreen. The mic itself is around $200 if you buy it brand new, and then this fur windscreen is like an extra $30. So that's like, you know, $230 for this mic setup. Whereas with this, it's a $28 microphone. You could easily find a third party like fur windscreen on Amazon for around 20 bucks. So all in all, it would be like, uh, what, $50 microphone? So that's pretty good for the sound quality that you're getting. And again, it has the plus 10 dB. I'm sure some of you are thinking like, well, you know, the roads and stuff have a plus 20 dB. And honestly, I think that in 2019 with all the cameras that are coming out and even some of my older cameras like the Panasonic GH3, you don't really need the plus 20 dB gain anymore because the, the preamps in these cameras nowadays are actually a lot better than they used to be. So you don't really need so hot of a signal going into your camera. At least that's my opinion. The Rode VideoMic Pro is, in my opinion, too hot of a signal to go into even my GH3, which came out in 2012. So that's why I like to use the Sennheiser as opposed to something like the Rode VideoMic Pro. So what you've been listening to right now is actually just a lapel mic that I have on, but I'm gonna switch out this mic for the Pixel mic, and I have a magic arm right here that I'm just gonna attach it to, and I'm gonna give you a demonstration of what this mic sounds like in a YouTube video type situation. All right, so now I have the Pixel mic boomed right next to my face and it's on a magic arm that's connected to my tripod and this is what the audio quality will sound like if you're using it in like a youtube video type situation like this and like i said i actually didn't need a microphone extension cable even though the mic is pretty close to my face and the camera is a little further away from me the coiled cable on this mic is so long that i didn't even need a extension cable to get it to reach my camera that's kind of cool. And like I mentioned before, this mic isn't as loud of a mic as like the Sennheiser or, you know, a, a lot of the other mics that I've used. So I do notice in my microphone levels that I'm not getting the same levels as I would with a different mic. So that's just something that you might have to take into consideration. Uh, you might have to boost the levels in camera a little bit. All the audio that you've been listening to has been filmed with the preamps all the way down inside of my Panasonic GH3. So it kind of depends on which camera you're gonna be using this mic with. You might have to boost the levels internally a little bit because it might not be like hot enough of a signal for your camera. That's just something that you're gonna have to mess around with depending on what camera you use. Anyways, that was my really quick review of this Pixel MC550 microphone. I actually think that it performs really well for a $28 microphone. And if you would like to pick this mic up, you can check the link in the description below. If you buy from that link or any of the other links in the description, um, it'll really help out my channel. So. Yeah, there'll also be links to a bunch of other gear that I use and recommend, as well as my Patreon, Selfie, and Teespring account if you want to check out those. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. You can click right over here if you want to check out some of my other videos. But until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.